But Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle presents the Mel Blanc Show. <laughs> Shopping. I've got to take it to Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. My percolator top is cracked. I've got to take it to Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. Oh, my stocking has a run in it. I've got to take it to Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. My wife's going to have a baby. i got to take her to Mel Blanc's... Uh, to the hospital! Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mary Jane Croft, Earl Ross, Joe Kearns, Zookie, Victor Miller and his orchestra... And as the star in his own fix-it shop, Mel Blank. <laughs> now let's pay a visit to the town where Mel Blank lives. It's like most towns in the United States, except for one thing. It's got Mel Blank, and that's what makes it a lot different. Well, let's drop in on Mel Blank in his fix-it shop. It's a bright, sunshiny day, and Mel is busily working away on something. Well, I sure straightened out that safety pin. <laughs> Let's see now, what else is there? Well, good morning, Melvin. Oh, good morning, Mr. Cushing. Mel, how come you didn't show up at our last zebra meeting? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Cushing, I'm not very interested in the benevolent order of loyal zebras. Well, well, why, why not? After all, aren't you exalted ruler of the lower level? Exalted ruler of the lower level. All it means is I'm in charge of sweeping out the cellar. <laughs> it's okay for you. You're the mighty, supreme, mightiest, exalted ruler, potentate monarch, senior grade. <laughs> all right, all right. At our next meeting, I'll see about changing your title. Oh, uh, incidentally, we've got a new password. Yeah? What is it? Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. <laughs> ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga? <laughs> Well, what happened to the old one? Hi, Mocha, Sai, Hungary, Hebe, Jeebe, Alligadabba, Sweet Cookie. <laughs> well, uh, you, uh, you know that new member we got, that 75-year-old Mr. Simpson? Yeah. Well, he tried to say it and developed lower plate wobble. <laughs> oh, too bad. I like the old one. I could say it faster than any other zebra. Oh, uh, what do you got in this white box, Mr. Cushing? In here? Oh, I've got Sally in here. Oh, isn't it kind of stuffy for her? <laughs> oh, no, no. No, Sally's the name of my fishing rod and reel. Here. Oh, gosh, I never heard of a man calling a fishing rod and reel Sally. Well, you should hear what I call her when she lets a big one get away. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, looks like the reel is a little fouled up. Yes, well, that's why I brought her here, Mel. I want you to fix her up. You see, some of the boys at my real estate office have arranged a fishing trip at Lake Minnewasahaha. Oh, I'm Okasai Hungry, Hebe Jeebe, Alligadabba, Sweet Cookie for... Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were giving me the password. <laughs> well, we've got to be very secretive about it because we've told our wives we're going on a business trip. Now, if they find out we're playing, uh, hooky, <laughs> well, you've seen my wife, Mrs. Cushing. Gosh, yes, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. Uh, what? Well, I mean, if she finds out about the fishing trip, she'd be awfully mad, and I wouldn't want that to happen. Yes, well, that's the idea. Now, another thing, Mel. I want you to go out to the lake and go over Mary Lou. Who's Mary Lou? Sally's sister? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. She's the trimmest little motorboat that ever took to water. I want you to check her from stem to stern. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, um, I mean, yes, sir. Well, that's fine. A and remember, Mel, don't tell a soul. And if you do a good job, perhaps you'll be made exalted ruler of the upper region. Oh, I don't like cleaning up the attic, either. <laughs> oh, but don't worry about the fishing trip. I won't tell a soul. That's good. You do a good job, and I'll use my influence to make you a big zebra. Gosh, thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, when do you want Sally? I, I mean, the fishing rod. Well, uh, bring it to the corner of Market and Maple at six tonight. I don't want you coming to the office or the house. Okay, six with Sally, and after that, over to the lake for Mary Lou. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds like I'm taking care of a girl sorority. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. Uh, oh, by the way, Mel, here's a picture of the boat Mary Lou, so you'll recognize her at the lake. Oh, fine, thanks. Well, so long, Melvin, my lad. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. Yeah, ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo. <laughs> ugga. Ugga, ugga, I don't know. I still like Hymo because I hungry heebie jeebie. I'll get have a sweet cookie better. Ugga, ugga, boo. Huh. Hello, nephew. Oh, hello, uncle. Say, where have you been? Oh, I was upstairs conducting my experiments on quantitative analysis with liquids. Oh, you were experimenting with water? Water? Brrr, what a horrible word. <laughs> By the way, what were you discussing with that pompous real estate muckety muck cushy? 
Oh, he's going on a fishing trip, and he doesn't want anyone to know about it. Imagine lying to your own wife. Despicable, my boy, but sometimes very necessary. I remember my I hope wife. I never have to lie to my girl, Betty. Hello, Mel. Oh, speak of the beautiful, and here she is. Hello, Betty. Mel, do you know what day this is? Yeah, Tuesday the 8th of October, and you sound like you're catching cold. <laughs> That's right. Five years ago today, you gave me my engagement ring. Josh, it only seems like, like five years. Remember how all the girls turned green with envy? Yeah, now the ring is the same color. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, darling, I want you to come over for dinner tonight. We'll make it kind of special. Special? Yes, Father has promised to treat you like a human being. Gee, that will be kind of special. I'll be glad to come. Oh, uh, but, uh... Well, what, dear? Well, you see, I, uh, I have an important job to do, and it may take me all evening. Oh, Mel, and I was planning such a lovely dinner. Fish. <laughs> Fish? Oh, well, that's nice, but, uh, well, you see, this is a big job, and I promised Well, that... I guess business should come first. Well, I'm terribly sorry, honey. Well, try to drop by for a minute anyhow, huh? Yeah, I will, honey. Okay, bye, dear. Bye. Oh, darn it. What is it, nephew? Oh, Betty wanted me to come over tonight, but I can't. Well, at least it'll make her father feel good. My lad, you shouldn't kowtow to Betty's father. I don't kowtow. I mean kowtow to him. As a matter of fact, I'm going over there tonight. And if he says one harsh word to me, you know what I'll do? What? I'll listen. <laughs> When a fellow is about to kiss a girl and doesn't, it's time for her to suspect she has a little breath of trouble. I mean, unpleasing breath. Don't let unpleasing breath jinx your popularity. Do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, Betty is disappointed that Mel can't have dinner with her on their fifth engagement anniversary. What Betty doesn't know is that she's playing second fiddle to a rod and reel Mel is secretly fixing for Mr. Cushing. Right now, Mel has dropped in for a few minutes at Betty's house. Hello, Betty. I thought I'd drop in for a minute. Oh, that's wonderful, Mel. Daddy Mel's here. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> what did you say, Mr. Colby? Uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> yeah, it is a nice day, isn't it? Mel, father was looking forward to this evening. He even promised to go to the movies with us. Gee, that would have been swell. We could have stopped by for a soda and walked home in the moonlight, sat on the porch and held hands. I didn't promise anything like that. <laughs> well, I mean Betty and me. <laughs> you know, I gave up a date at the bowling alley for this, this anniversary. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Colby. I know you spend at least one night a week in the alley. What? <laughs> uh, the bowling alley. Uh, Daddy, stop making Mel nervous. Honey, uh, tell me about this big job you've got tonight. Oh, uh, oh, the job? Uh, yeah. Well? Uh, I have a date to meet, uh, uh, uh Willie Johnson uh, about fixing the card table. Well, why should it take all evening to fix the card table? Well, uh, after I fix it, we might have to play a few games to see if the table works. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? Now, Daddy, let's not cross-examine Mel. Here, honey, here are some chocolate cookies I baked. Your favorite, all wrapped up for you. Gosh, thanks, Betty. Well, now I'd better go. Well, good night, Mr. Colby. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say, Mr. Colby? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it is a nice day, isn't it? Well, goodbye, Betty. Goodbye, dear. Betty, come here. Did I hear Mel say he was going to see Willie Johnson? Yes, why? <laughs> That's funny. I met Mrs. Johnson at the market today, and she said her son Willie is in New York and is going to stay there. But Mel said... Uh, oh, I'll answer that. 
Hello. Oh, hello, Mel. Oh. Your uncle told me I'd find you at Betty's house. Now, just answer yes or no, because I don't want that big baboon Betty's father to catch on. Oh, okay. Well, now, listen. About our date, we have to change our plans. My wife gummed up the works. Very interesting. I mean, yeah. Uh, now, listen. My girl will pick you up on the corner of Market and Mabel. And don't forget to bring Sally. Sally? Uh, I mean, yes. Uh, anything else? No. Ugg, ugg, boo, ugg, boo, boo, ugg. Goodbye. <laughs> oh. So that's the way things are. Where was it, Father? Boy, was I right about that innocent-looking boyfriend of yours. Come on. Well, where are we going? To Market and Maple. And if what I think is true, somebody's going to get an ugga ugga boo over his head. <laughs> over there all alone. Huh? Oh, this is silly. Well, maybe it is. But we'll sit right here and see who he's waiting for. I don't think it will be Willie Johnson. I wonder what's keeping Mr. Cushing. Mmm, these cookies are good. Gosh, when it comes to sweet stuff, there's only one girl in the world for me. Oh, you hoo Are you, uh, you hooing me? Yes, come on over here and don't be so bashful. Well, look, I'm... I, I'm waiting for someone. Oh, come now. Come on over to the car. Well, yeah, but... That's better. Uh... Have a cookie? <laughs> I'm Grace, Mr. Cushing's secretary. Oh, and I thought... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not that kind of a girl. <laughs> That's good. I'm not that kind of a boy. <laughs> Mr. Cushing dropped by at the office, so I'm here to pick up his favorite fishing rod, Sally. Is it ready? Sure. Here you are. Oh, yes. And, um, about that job on the boat, that can wait till tomorrow morning. Say, that's great. Uh, look, will you do me a favor? Drop me off at my girl's house? Of course. Get in. Good. I thought I wouldn't be able to see her tonight. Now maybe I can. Daddy, did you see that Mel and that girl? Willie Johnson's getting better looking every day. <laughs> Meeting girls on the corner and on our anniversary, too. Why, that, that fox. You mean wolf? No fox. They work faster. <laughs> Mother, I'm going to break every bone in that boy's body. Oh. Oh, now what are you sniffling about? I want you to do it. But I love those bones so much. Oh, I <laughs> Gosh, I feel like a heel lying to Betty last night. I promised Mr. Cushing to keep it a secret. Oh, Melvin, my boy. Huh? Zookie wants to know if you need him today. Zookie? Say, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. What, nephew? I'm going to send Zookie out to Lake Miniwazahaha to fix that boat. Yes, sir, and I'm going to spend all day with Betty. After all, Zookie knows engines inside out. Yes, and it's a pity he leaves them that way. <laughs> It's in, 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 nice working out here on, on, on the lake. In the shade of the old apple, it, 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 it. In the shade of the old apple, it, it, it. <laughs> Cocktails for two. <laughs> hey, uh, I like being on a, uh, on a boat. Yeah, I like the uh, water. This is it, this is it, they are sailing, sailing. Over the bee, over the bee, it be, it be, it be. Sailing, sailing, over the bee, it be. It be. And, and, and my stomach feels funny. Well, 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 sir. Hello. How are you getting on with that engine? I didn't expect Mel to send an assistant. Oh, oh it's okay, Mr. Cushing. Uh, listen, I'll uh, re erase the motor. Uh, 120 horsepower. Uh, 80 horse uh, 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 at uh, uh, 20 horsepower. <laughs> One jackass. Well, now, now, hurry along. Hurry along. I want the Mary Lou to be right on the beam when the other boys get there. Oh, sure. I uh, dream of Jeannie with a light bee of the bee. I dream of Jeannie with a light bee. <laughs> and may all your Christmases be wide. Mel 
left the shop looking for you this morning, Betty. Oh, he did, Uncle Rupert? <laughs> Maybe that's him now. Would you answer it? Yeah, all right. Hello, Mel Blank, fix the shop. Oh, um, uh, Betty, this is is the is the is the is the Yes, is, yes. Is. What is it, Zookie? Uh, how'd you know it was me? <laughs> hey, uh, will you tell Mel uh, uh, that I did what he told me, and and everything's all right now with him and Mary Lou. Mary Lou. Oh, she she was ready to blow a gasket when I got here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but now I got a pee, a pee, a pee, a pee, purring like a kitten. Rookie, are you sure you know? Oh yes, uh, just the same. Mel had uh, better come out and see him, me and me, Mary Lou. The first chance he gets. Oh, goodbye. Zucky. Betty, my dear, what is it? First Sally, now Mary Lou. How many girls has he got? Oh, Betty, there must be some mistake. And I came here hoping I was wrong about him. Well, I never want to see him again, never. And you can tell him that, Uncle Rupert. Nell, playing around with the women? Why, I'd never have thought of him. Who does he think he is? Me? <laughs> Where the devil is that lad, anyway? Uh-oh. Here comes Dr. Crab, the dog doctor. Hello, Christopher. How's the good dog doctor today? Consultant veterinarian, if you don't mind. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Keep telling you, there's nothing the matter with me. <laughs> Got a catch in the throat. Please, could I have a pan of water? Look, Christopher, we are having all sorts of trouble. I'm trying to locate Mel. And... Oh, I ran across Mel in the park while I was walking my little terrier. <laughs> you saw Mel? Where was he going? You know, I'm worried about that little terrier. She came down with the shingles. <laughs> How could she have gotten them shingles? Maybe she had a priority. <laughs> That is not a joke. <laughs> oh, C-Mail fixed that leash for me. How'd he do it? Oh, he just used a piece of tin. What? Tin, tin. Like in Rin Tin Tin. Oh, Rin Tin Tin. <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> Uncle Rupert, what are you talking about? What girls? I don't know, my lad, but you'd better get over to Betty's house right away. Girls, girls, I don't know anything about girls. Well, I can't have a man-to-man -man talk with you now. Oh, but you know I don't have anything to do with girls. Except for Betty. I love her. So I don't think of her as a girl. <laughs> Nephew, I'd better take you aside and have a man-to-man -man talk with you right now. <laughs> Oh, how did I get into a mess like this? The best thing for you to do, my lad, is pour your heart out to Betty. Tell her the only sin you've committed was that of being a man. I refuse to tell her any such lie. <laughs> oh, Mel. Mel. Oh, Betty, what's the matter? As angry as I am for what you've done, I had to come down here. You know that silver-handled cane you gave my father for his birthday? Yes, and he never even used it. Well, he's going to use it now. He's coming down here to beat you up with it. Oh, he can't do that. Does he realize how much that cane costs? Oh, Betty, this is ridiculous. Is it ridiculous with Sally and Mary Lou? Oh, I haven't gone out with girls. Sally is a fishing rod and Mary Lou is a boat. Oh, Mel, if you think I believe that, you must take me for an idiot. Yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> oh, look, if you don't believe me, ask the boat. I mean, ask Mr. Cushing. It's his Sally. I, I mean, it's, it's Mary Lou's fishing reel. It's... Oh, what am I saying? Melvin, here's that picture of the Mary Lou. Oh, the picture. That's wonderful. Uncle, you saved my life. Look, Betty, this will explain everything. This picture was taken when Mr. Cushing caught the biggest trout of the season. Huh? Yeah, that's Sally in his hand, the fishing rod. And you see the name on the boat? Mary Lou. What? Oh, that's what it does say. Oh, Mel. Oh, and Daddy and I thought... <laughs> oh, Daddy. Mel Blank. Mr. Colby. Mr. Colby, why are you staring at me like that? I'm looking for a spot that has the most bones. <laughs> well, stop looking at my head. Oh. Young man, when I get through with you, you're going to be the most horrible-looking mess anybody ever saw. Well, that's nothing. You always say I look like that anyway. What? Come here, my boy. I'm not going to hurt you. No, no. no. Oh, you missed me. I want this time. My case. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Cushing, am I glad to see you. What's going on here? Somebody being initiated? 
Oh. Boy, am I glad you came. Quick, tell Mr. Colby about Mary Lou and Sally before he kills me. Well, I don't know what all the trouble is about, but uh, Sally is my fishing rod and Mary Lou is my boat, which I asked Mel to fix for me. And a very fine job he did, too. Well, I'll be... Oh, Mel, why didn't you say so? Well, I couldn't tell you. I promised Mr. Cushing to keep it a secret. That's what caused this whole trouble. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, Mel, we didn't have to be secretive about the whole thing all along. What? No. It seems the trip was something the fellas arranged as a surprise party for me, and my wife was in on it all the time. <laughs> she was. Yes. Mm. Uh, Mel, why are you staring at me like that? Mel, mm. put down that cat. Mel, remember, I'm a zebra. Oh, go, go. Oh, 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 oh. We'll be back in a minute with the Zippy Echo. Use Colgate tooth powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. What makes a blonde suddenly less fond of a fellow? Well, often it's because he has a little breath of trouble. I mean, unpleasing breath. No man should let this breath of trouble mark him down socially. What to do? Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, we had quite a time when I tried to pull the wool over Betty's eyes. I hope it served as a lesson to you, Zuki. Yes, Zuki. Every experience has a moral. Just what did you learn? Well, uh, I learned that you should always uh, uh, speak the truth. Uh, tr- uh, speak the. Tr- uh, you should always speak the honest truth. Tr- uh, uh, you should always speak the. Tr- <laughs> Silence is golden. This is Buddy Easton reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday at this time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blanc's Fix It Shop. Say hello to Halo Shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. For Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Halo lets hair sparkle with natural brilliance. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather to quickly carry away loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo Shampoo at any cosmetic counter. The Mel Blanc Show was written by David Victor and Herb Little Jr. and was produced and directed by Joe Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, your local community chests are out to raise the largest amount of money in their history. The funds will be used in wise, friendly, neighborly services for the handicapped, the helpless aged, the sick, and children in need. Please give as generously as you can to your community chest. You cannot support a worthier, more, more needed agency for welfare than your local community chest. (laughs) 